Amrit, my next question is for you. What are the drivers in Africa that are influencing the digital strategies for financial services firms? Um, so I think one of the aspirations that we have within the Standard Bank Group is to find this delicate balance between being truly human and truly, truly digital at the same time. So truly human and truly digital. And I think that there's a shift in human capabilities that are required, whereas previously we know, or still now in, to a large extent, there's a, there's a large amount of human engagement from the fulfillment process. So human engagement in making sure that um, the back office capabilities work. And I think that's the part that often leads to a client frustration because we have this interference, we have bottlenecks, people don't know where we are in the process. This is where we often hear people say, you know, I only stay with you because of my relationship with my relationship manager, because they make it work despite all of this um, back office interference and engagement. And so we've got to make sure that we shift this to make sure that the front end human engagement is the place where we add value, where we show empathy, where we really become digital experts to make sure that we help our clients fulfill in terms of their uh, digital engagement with um, us from a solution perspective. And so go forward, um, we see this shift from um, very much the technical expertise, which to some extent is still required, to the human engagement um, expertise. And, and we do think that this is a very exciting shift happening within the organization. We know that our clients within uh, the Standard Bank Group, for example, have got many ways to access us digitally, and they use that very successfully. But so the focus has got to be for us to make sure that this back-end fulfillment now very happens very seamlessly. And the solutioning, digital solutioning that we refer to, we really measure through eight different principles. We've got to make sure that it's simple that it's paperless, that it's 24 seven, that it's the same for clients as it is for staff, so that it's as easy for our staff to help a client as it is for the client to actually engage. Um, Sangeet spoke about data earlier. We know that it's one of our great tools, but do we actually use it? Um, because just having access to data or sitting on this gold mine is not a competitive advantage. It's actually being able to even potentially partner with others to make sure that um, we use this data to the benefit of, of the client, um, that it's scalable. Um, and then this issue of um, straight through processing. So straight through, through processing is probably the hardest part of digital fulfillment. We know that there are some organizations globally um, who have eliminated any form of human engagement, even in their credit processes. And in fact, I've heard of some of them in China where you need the signer from the chief executive to have any level of human engagement, um, which is quite aspirational and actually a, a, a wonderful target for all of us to have. But so I think it's very important that clients have choice in terms of how they want to engage with us and when they want to have that um, level of human engagement. We've some, seen some statistics that say that digitally active clients are two and a half times as loyal and with two and a half times as big a share of wallet as traditional clients. And that's really down to the ease of doing business and the fact that they generally have a broader array of choice that they can access um, digitally on a 24 seven basis. We heard earlier, Chris spoke about behavioral science and behavioral science is really such an important part of us engaging our client um, as a segment of one. So to bring in personalization so that everyone that we engage with feel like we've tailored our value proposition just for them and we are not sending them information or data that really is um, irrelevant um, to them. And so I think if we look at the African continents and some of the trends that are happening there, we know that um, remittances is a very strong driver on the continent. And there are many, many mobile players who've come up with very easy digital solutions to solve for these needs. And that's often taken business away from the traditional banks. And so I think the African continent really is at the forefront in terms of embracing a lot of these digital capabilities in um, making sure that we solve for the needs of our clients. Thank you.